Okay, we've got most of the um, loose crud off the engine now. So we're going to remove the magneto so we can clean that up. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard. The magneto has already been off a couple of times. And then we can clean it up. Okay, we have the air filter assembly here for the pair A. Uh, it's generally in pretty good condition actually. The bottom isn't rusted out at all. Um, the air filter element inside is pretty good. Although I'm not sure how you get it out. Um, I really don't know how you get it out. Maybe you can't get them out, I don't know. So we're going to start cleaning them up, ready for painting now. We're just um, starting to paint a few things. Like the top section of the cowling here has had a coat of black inside. Just going to give it the one coat of black inside just to protect it a little bit. And then we've got to go for red oxide in a little while on the cowling. Two coats of red oxide we're going to try and then a coat of black on top. Because the cowling on this is going to be black. With a few other little bits are going to be black as well. And then most of it is going to be green. Also painted the starting handle for the engine. That's sitting there, that's looking pretty good. So we're slowly but surely making progress. Uh, we're just going to go ahead now and do a little bit to this air filter. Okay, the parts are cleaned up now and did all wire brushed and sanded and they're ready for their first coat of red oxide primer now. This bracket looks like it's had an old farm repair, big old weld on it. <laughs> it's the sort of thing I like to see on these old engines. A little bit where they've repaired something to get it going again rather than running the engine without an air filter. He's actually gone and repaired the bracket and bottled it all back together. Pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to give this all a coat of red oxide primer now. Okay, we're just preparing the sump here for its first coat of red oxide primer. So we've uh, been cleaning it up. It's not looking too bad actually. Uh, again, no paint. Bar this little tiny black S on one side of the crankcase. I'm not entirely sure what that's all about, but anyway. The actual sump is fairly nice inside. I'll go over that just with a hoover before I put it back on the engine. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and paint it now. Should look good. Okay, the sump and the gear cover have both had two coats of red oxide primer. So we're going to go ahead and apply the first coat of the Mowog Green and uh, see what she looks like after that first coat. Okay, it's been quite a while since we've had any sort of update on the old pair. Um, even though I've only just uploaded the videos, uh, they've only just been recently uploaded because I had some trouble with my laptop hard drive failed and I've only just been able to recover a few things off of it so I'm going to have to get a new hard drive to fix that but we've also tidied up the whole workshop rearranged everything to get a bit more room all the old stuff that was in here is still in here it's just we've now got this whole heap of space to be working on stuff which is pretty damn good we got the old connecting rod out of the pair uh, we released the piston off the connecting rod first by just uh, doing these little C-clips here with a special tool to remove them which is in one of these drawers there it is it's just a C-clip removal tool you just clamp them in that and pull them out fairly easy and then a bit of copper, bu copper pipe I used to drive the gudgeon pin out which was uh, fairly easy to do uh, the connecting rod bolts though were horrendously tight they took a bit of beating with a open-ended spanner and uh, and a hammer 
to get those shocked off. Oh, yeah. Just got bent over tab systems, lock it there, just like the smaller air cooled engines. Uh, we're looking pretty good now. The sump has had some decent coats of paint. Yeah, we're all looking pretty good. The sump has had two coats. This gear cover has also had two coats, but uh, those are the only things, bar the magneto, that have had some paint put on them. Obviously, we've still got the main block down here. I wanted to get the connecting rod out so I can make a thick card gasket here that covers the whole entire hole so nothing can get in there that's that's the plan there obviously we're gonna have to try and avoid getting too much stuff on the gears that we can't just wipe off with some white spirit or something but the actual sump is really the actual block I mean is really nice and clean and we can see the oil holes here for the main bearings all look pretty good there's no end float at all um, the big end is pretty good, a couple of little scores, same with the um, shells in the big end cap there, but they're fairly good, they haven't been spinning around, they haven't, they didn't actually have any play in it at all, so that should go back together fine, and uh, the sort of sump guard sort of arrangement that they have here, obviously the dipper comes through this slot, and oil returns through here, and through these holes into the sump again. That's just held in there with four screws, which are actually still down here. Gotta put those in the pot. But yeah, so that's what we've been doing today. But at least I got this little shelf knocked up quickly just to get out of scrap stuff. But it gets all the socket sets out of the way that were originally on the bench here. We can finally work in here as well as working out in the conservatory as well. Right, well, let's crack on. Just going to uh, start cleaning up the piston and this plate and a few other little things. Okay, we just popped the piston rings off of the engine and uh, I can just get out of the light. They all look pretty good, we're obviously going to have to measure them in the bore. The oil control ring is incredibly dirty. But uh, the compression rings aren't too bad, they're pretty clean. The oil groove is a little bit dirty as well, but none of them look too bad. We're just going to go ahead now and decarbonise, degrease the piston and uh, see what it looks like then. Okay, we've gone through quite a bit of work here now, and we've cleaned up the piston. The oil groove is all cleared out, same with the top two compression grooves. We've also cleared out all the holes for the oil. It's looking pretty good. Obviously we've got the score in there, and on the opposite side as well, which is a little bit concerning, but it all seems to be underneath the rings there's no damage to the rings although we haven't actually measured these in the bore yet so that's the next stage see how big the gaps are and uh, the oil ring has had a good bit of treatment to clear that out that was really bad so pretty good that we took the barrel off there because nearly every single one of those was clogged up and uh, connecting rod down here Again, just as well we took it out, can't really see it on the camera, but down in that oil way there, although it is clear, there is some debris in there of some description, can't really see it on the camera, but I have got a picture of it, so I don't think that's supposed to be there at all, so we're going to clear that out, can't see any reason for it being there at all really, so yeah. Everything in the block seems to be pretty good as well. The governor weights are all intact. Springs look pretty good. It's all 
nice and tight. The starter dog message there, and that's in really good condition. Yeah, she's not too bad at all. A few little marks on the crank, but again, nothing too major. Should be okay. Should be fine.